First attention, please. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is nice to be with you again. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to enjoy ourselves this afternoon. A couple of short jokes. <laughs> One's about a budget car. <laughs> and the other one's about the parrot. Well, there's this here chap. And he wanted a pet. But he didn't know what to get. They said, well, what did he get? A budget car, then. Easy to look after. So he goes down to the pet shop. And he said to the bloke, he said, I want a budget car. But I want to go to. The bloke says, they come to the right place. And he says, see that budget up in that cage there? He said, now that one's so much special. He said, mine's costly. He said, how much? He said, hundred pound. Hundred pound for a budget car? He said, it must be special. He said, well, what is special about it? He said, well, I'll tell thee. He says, it lays square eggs. <laughs> the size of your case. <laughs> he said, hundred pound for a budget. Hundred pound, he said. I don't know. He said, well, will it talk? He said, well, a funny thing, he said, they asking me that. He said, he does say one word. He said, what's that? He said, well, every time it lays this egg, it says, oh! <laughs> 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 well, when we lived in the Dow Park, there's a woman down the road there, and we got a parrot. Now this parrot, he could do anything. He could talk his head off. So anyway, her said, this woman said to the parrot, her said, look, her said, I would, I gotta go down into town. Her said, and the coal mine's coming. Her said, now when the coal mine comes, tell him I want four bags, and the money's in the sugar basin. <laughs> so anyway, her goes out, and the coal mine comes, and her said, the parrot says, I want four bags of coal, and the money's in the sugar basin. Anyway, the coal mine drops the coal, and he's just, on his way out, when this woman comes back and mark it. So anyway, he said, the call mod said, Mrs. He said, that parrot the lie. He said, he's a beauty. He said, what sell it, me? He said, he's a fine talker, that is. And the parrot says, oh, he said, I can count as well. He said, he's only dropped three bags. <laughs> <laughs> the first one, busy words. Of his front end is sweet and kind, but never trust a bee's behind. A bee can sting if it can sit, so always keep in front of it. <laughs> And the next one, for Gail. On the chest of a barmaid called Gail was tattooed the prices of ale. <laughs> and on her behind, for the sake of the blind, was the same information in Braille. <laughs> Daily wash and once a week a trip. 
They don't need any gearbox. They go at their own pace. And if they should run to catch a bus, they would win any race. <coughs> when it comes to night time, they don't need a garage or a shed. They walk me slowly up the stairs and sleep with me in bed. <laughs> A tape sent to me a few weeks ago, and uh, this fella was born in 1920. Now he said, when he, in 1926, when the strike was on, he was only about six years old then, he went to a concert, and uh, there was a bloke, this concert, he said, well, it's a ditty. Now I'm going to sing this song, not because I want you to hear my voice, but I want to know if anybody in this room... <laughs> Has ever heard this before? Because <laughs> there might be a second verse, who knows? <laughs> and it's called Mrs. Borrow. Here goes. <laughs> You're always on the borrow, Mrs. Borrow. Little lads and ends, you borrow from your friends. A little bit of that. A little bit of that, a little knob of soda, or some pieces for the cat. Oranges and lemons, saucepans and frying pans, rolling pins, sultanas and plums. Although you say you'll bring them back tomorrow, Mrs. Sparrow, like tomorrow, Mrs. Sparrow, never call. Have you heard that before? Well, that was 1926. I think the block must have been dreaming, you know. <laughs> right, now I'm going to do a little song, and I've only ever done this once, but I'm trying to learn it, so I hope that you'll bear with me. Uh, i got to get dressed up for this and all. <laughs> <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, but not too loud. <laughs>
and clinging tightly to the rope, I started up instead. <laughs> I shot up like a rocket, till to my dismay I found the dark way up. I met the blooming barrel coming down. <laughs> Now the barrel broke my shoulder as to the ground it fed. And when I reached the top, I banged the bully with me head. <laughs> I clung on tightly, numb with shock from this almighty blow. And the barrel spilled out of the bricks, some fourteen flowers below. <laughs> now when those bricks had fallen from the barrel to the floor, I then outweighed the barrel and so started up once more. <laughs> Still clinging tightly to the rope, my body racked with pain. And that way down I met the blooming barrel once again. <laughs> now the force of this collision, halfway down the office block, caused multiple abrasions and a nasty state of shock. Still clinging tightly to the rope, I fell towards the ground, and I landed on the broken bricks that the barrel had scattered around. I lay there groaning on the ground. I thought I'd pass the worst, but the barrel hit the pulley wheel, and then the bottom burst. <laughs> A shower of bricks rained down on me. I didn't have a hope. And as I lay there bleeding on the ground, I let go the ruddy rope. <laughs> the barrel then grew heavier. It started down once more. And it landed right across me as I lay there on the floor. It broke three ribs on my left arm. And I could only say, I hope you'll understand why Murph is not at work today. <laughs> He said, Edward, do you think you would like to be a lion tamer? Well, 
motion to this lion and this lion come across to her and she put her hand like that and the lions lay down at her feet and she did this and the lion rolled over and so the manager said to that chap he said now you've just seen what this young lady's done and he said yes he said well now he said how do you think he said you go on he said <laughs> <laughs> doing that <laughs> Well, he said, easy enough to me. <laughs> I don't mind having a go, he said, but if I do, he said, there's one thing you'll have to do. He said, what's that? He said, you'll have to get rid of that ruddy lion first. <laughs> Some weight 
with this present slimming prey. How to avoid eating too much rich food that made one put on weight and instead do some exercise which they would find simply great. One lady said that her neighbour ate lots of bananas each day and drank gallons and gallons of coconut milk to try to slim the fat away. <laughs> the members who were interested in this asked, did you much improvement see? Well, she said, she hasn't lost much weight, but my, you should see her climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies, this is this is one for the ladies. If you if you can think back to the time when you first got married, I don't know. I think most of you will agree with this. You could never do anything the same as their mother, could you? You know, somebody said that's true. <laughs> somebody knows about it. Yeah. You could never do the same as their mother, could you? You couldn't cook the same as their mother. You couldn't. You couldn't iron the shirts the same as their mother. You didn't. You didn't starch the collars the same as them. You couldn't do anything, could you? The same as their mother. It was true. <laughs> Me. 
I bet that old lady down the road would love a custard for her tea. The lady smiled at the little lad and said, how very kind. I thought I was forgotten, but now I've a friend I find. The youngster said, I'll call again in case you are in need. For I'm a little cub scout and like to do a friendly deed. And now he visits her often, brightening up her day. She loves this little friendly lad, for her own son is far away. And every night she <coughs> offers up to God a real heartfelt prayer, giving thanks for that special day when someone showed such care. <laughs> Two chaps out to work, been out to work for a foster. Down applying for this job. The one was very, very nervous. And this man Bill said, oh, don't worry. He said, I'll go in post. He said, I'll go in and I'll come out and I'll tell you all about it. He said, glory about it. Anyway, Bill goes in and the monk says to him, he said, no. He said, if you were driving a crane, he said, you had an accident. He said, you lost one of your eyes. He said, what would happen? He said, well, I'd be half blind. He said, what about it affected both your eyes? He said, you couldn't see it all. He said, well, I'd be totally blind, sir. He said, that's all I want to know. He said, I'll let you know. So he goes out and he said to his man, dead easy. All they got to say, half blind. <laughs> totally blind. <laughs> Anyway, he goes in, and the, the blog says, good afternoon, he says, now, I want to ask you a few questions. He said, uh, quite simple. He said, just hold, just one to no. So he said, now, if you had an accident, he said, and you had one of your ears cut off, <laughs> he said, and you couldn't hear it at all, and you couldn't hear it at that ear, he said, what would, you, what, would uh, what would happen to me? He said, well, I'd be off mine, sir. <laughs> He said, well, what about if you lost both your ears? He said, and he couldn't hear at all. He said, well, I'd be totally blind, sir. <laughs> and the fellow said to him, well, he said, well, how do you make that out? He said, well, me cap would fall over me eyes, sir. <laughs> Shooting. He said, why ever not? He said, well, I've known him since he was that old. 